Hi there, this is Sean, the Honest Book Reviewer. In this video, we're discussing the first World of Warcraft novel. It's called Cycle of Hatred, and it's written by Keith R.A. DeCandido. I've loved World of Warcraft for a long time. I've played the game on and off over the years. The reason I like it so much is because it's like stepping into a fantasy fiction novel. The world of World of Warcraft, the actual world, is immense. There are many different continents. You can play for countless hours and there's so much to do. It's just a total immersive world. Again, I play on and off, so at the moment I'm not playing. I haven't played for a little while because it does take up a lot of your time. But I have decided to read all the World of Warcraft books because I just want to dive into more of the backstory and these books provide that. This book is a bridging novel between the original Warcraft series, so Warcraft 3, and World of Warcraft when it first started. So it's quite interesting to get that backstory between Warcraft and World of Warcraft. It does help to understand this book more if you have played World of Warcraft. The book has a lot of references from the game itself. A lot of place names and um, areas and even people in the game, characters in the game. So if you've played World of Warcraft, you'll probably understand all the book. If you haven't played World of Warcraft, you'll still follow the story, but the, you know, the place names won't make any sense to you. They're just place names in the book. You won't have that history of playing the game. What this book is about is there's a tenuous peace at the moment in Kalimdor between the orcs and the humans. It's very fragile because the orcs and humans joined forces to defeat the Burning Legion, and that was in Warcraft 3. So they were enemies until then. So this peace between them, it's so fragile. Just You just know that the smallest spark could start a new war between the two races. The orcs have gained their freedom, and prior to all this, the orcs were slaves. They were enslaved by humans, or they were enslaved by demons. They've gained their freedom, and they're very proud people. So they've regained their freedom. They want to regain their whole society. They want to build a town. They want to thrive. There are a lot of humans who resent them for that. There are a lot of humans in the story and in the world that want the orcs to be slaves again. You know, how dare the orcs think they're equal to humans? That's what some of the humans say. And that's all through the book as well. You get humans in different towns and they're saying, you know, these greenskins, that's what they call the orcs. How dare these greenskins be like this? So there's a lot of animosity between the humans and orcs in some places. Above all this, we have the two leaders. We have Thrall, the leader of the orcs, so he's the war chief. And we have Jaina Proudmoore, who's the leader of the humans in this continent, Kalimdor. They know the peace is so fragile, and they don't want war, they want peace. But there's a secretive group in the background trying their hardest to bring on war. And this secretive group is the Burning Legion. They were the group that was thought to be defeated in a prior war. But they seem to be emerging again, and on both sides. So we've got some Burning Legion people in the Orcs and in the humans. And they're both trying to start a war with each other. And we see different events happening in this book, you know, the occasional killing of a human by an orc, or the occasional ambush of orcs by humans. We see that through the book, and in each case, it's this secretive group, the Burning Legion, behind it all. But the heroes don't know that at the start. They're slowly picking up the pieces, they see some evidence, and they're piecing it all together. But it's just not enough to know what's going on. They've got to find the root cause. They've got to get to the root power of this group that's emerging again and destroy that. So that's the quest element on this book, as it were. You know, the game itself is all about quests, and some quests are like chain quests. You do one quest, then the next, then the next. And that's what this book feels like. So some of the heroes have to do a few different things, different tasks, and complete those to find something to lead them on to the next task or to help them with the next task. And that's what happens in this book. So I won't go into detail about all that, but I'll just say that there's a huge conflict coming, and no one knows 
at the very end if they're going to survive. So will they save everything? Will they bring about peace? Or will they fail? And will a war start between the orcs and the humans? A war that could tear everything apart that they've worked so hard for. The two main characters in this book are Jaina Proudmoore and Thrall. So Jaina Proudmoore is the leader of the humans on Kalimdor. She's a mage, a very powerful mage, and she wants peace. You see a goodness in Jaina, and you know she's got a strength as well, because prior to this book, in the story, you know, prior to the book, she went against her whole family, and she kind of sacrificed her family for the good of the world to beat the Burning Legion. And if she didn't do that, then everything would have been lost. So you can see she's willing to sacrifice things, sacrifice things she loves to bring about peace. So she's all about hope and peace, and she's so strong, and she believes in people when other people don't. So there's a whole strength, I guess, about Jaina Proudmoore that carries through this novel. That's the main thing you see. Thrall, who is now the war chief of the Orcs, he is another very strong and proud character. So he was a slave. He was discovered as an infant by humans and raised by them, but he was also a slave to them. And they had some sort of um, secret thing they were going to do, like sacrificing more or secret plans for Thrall. But he managed to escape, and then he managed to free the orcs that were enslaved by humans and demons. So he became war chief. So you can see he's very strong, he's very proud. He has a big dream for orcs to be their own nation, for orcs to come back to their tr proud roots. That's what drives Thrall, at least in this book. This book isn't bad. It's not the most exciting book. It could have been more exciting. I did enjoy the story. I enjoyed the backstory to World of Warcraft and the bridging element between Warcraft 3 and World of Warcraft. That was quite fascinating. But I think it could have been done in a more exciting way because there are parts where it is a bit dull. Um, there's some good action scenes, some good scenes with some magic happening, but there's not enough of them. And I think the author could have done a bit more with our heroes and made them a bit bigger, put them in some more exciting scenes or shown their prowess a bit more or, the, or their skills a bit more. We see glimpses of what they can do, um, their strengths and their weaknesses, but it just doesn't feel enough. It could have been a little bit more to make it more exciting. And I think if it was more exciting, more people who haven't played the game may read the book. I rate this a 3 out of 5. It's an okay book. I'm going to read the rest of the books in the World of Warcraft world anyway. But I think, you know, I'm hoping that some other books in the series, as I go along, will be a little bit more exciting. And I've got a feeling they will be, because they're all written by different authors. So it just may depend on which author writes which book. As I go through all the World of Warcraft books, I'll put a review on my channel. If you don't want to miss out on those, check out my channel and subscribe. I have reviewed other books based on TV shows, movies, and now there's going to be computer games. If you want to see more books based on those type of things, check out the playlist on my channel. It should be on your screen now.